Welcome to the Knox County Health Department's three-part diabetes management series. My name is Kayla McKeever and I'm a registered dietitian here at the Health Department. The purpose of this three-part series of classes is to help people living with type 2 diabetes learn to better manage their condition and prevent complications. This class can also be a good resource for people who are caregivers of those living with type 2 diabetes and want to provide emotional support to those that they love. These um, classes are broken down into three main sections. We will cover background information on diabetes management basics in the first session. In the second session, we will learn about healthy eating and carb counting. In the third session, we'll talk about day-to-day -day management tips for taking good care of your feet, traveling, and what to do when you're sick. In this first session, we'll cover the basics of type 2 diabetes, including what causes type 2 diabetes, um, the symptoms and diagnosis, lab values that your doctor may talk to you about. We'll talk about blood sugar and insulin, and then we'll talk about what goes into lifestyle changes for management of diabetes. Before we get into this lesson, there are a few key terms that we should probably define. So first is insulin. Insulin is an important hormone made by our bodies for blood sugar control. It allows our body to use up the sugar that's in our bloodstream. Blood glucose and blood sugar are terms that you'll hear used interchangeably. When we eat food, it gets broken down into sugar. And think about sugar as fuel for a car. It's what gives us energy. A blood glucose monitor is a tool that we use to check our blood sugar. Hemoglobin A1C is a blood test that tells you how well controlled your diabetes has been for the last two to three months. A carbohydrate is a type of food that impacts blood sugar the most and hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia mean high blood sugar and low blood sugar. The two most common types of diabetes are type 1 and type 2. Other types of diabetes do occur. Um, one is gestational diabetes that is common in women during pregnancy. Women with gestational diabetes are at an increased risk for developing type 2 diabetes after pregnancy or later in their life. Each of these are slightly different, but they all have some of the same concepts in common. And they all have to do with our body's ability to use food as energy. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease, usually being diagnosed during childhood or by age 20. And it only accounts for about 5 to 10% of all cases of diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is what we will focus on for the majority of this class. It is the most common form of diabetes and is related to several lifestyle factors. It's related to risk factors like extra body weight, family history, genetics, and other factors. People with type 2 diabetes are able to produce insulin, which is an important hormone, but usually this insulin stops being able to do its job properly. That's the main difference between type 1 diabetes and type 2. Now a few things we need to know about type 2 diabetes are that it's preventable, controllable, chronic, and common. Preventable meaning that if someone is diagnosed with pre-diabetes, they can make lifestyle changes to reduce the likelihood that they will develop type 2 diabetes. Leading an overall healthy lifestyle will prevent the likelihood that someone will develop type 2 diabetes. It's controllable, meaning that when someone is diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, there are things that they can do to manage their condition well and reduce the likelihood of developing complications. It's chronic, meaning that there's currently no cure and it lasts a lifetime once it's diagnosed. And it's common. Um, it's the most common type of diabetes and many people in the United States have it. So like I said, type 2 diabetes is a long-lasting health condition that affects how your body turns food into energy. The disease accounts for 90 to 95% of all cases of diabetes. So in type 2 diabetes, insulin can't do its job because either the cells that make up our muscles and organs don't use insulin well, we call this insulin resistance, or the body just doesn't make enough insulin to function properly. Therefore, we either have to take medication or insulin or sometimes a combination of both. So according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in 2020, 34 million people in the United States had diabetes, which is about one in every 10 people. 
Many people with type 2 diabetes don't actually know that they have the disease because it's typically asymptomatic or silent in its early stages. More than one third of people with diabetes are unaware that they have it. People with prediabetes can prevent developing type 2 diabetes through weight loss, lifestyle changes, and healthy eating. You can enroll in a CDC-recognized lifestyle change program by looking online to see where the nearest program is to you.